Okay. Can everybody see me okay? Rusty's hiding on t on top of the nest. Oh, he sits up there sometimes. Is he there right now? No, he's in his hide box. Right now. Hi, everybody. You'll see Hein too. He's around. Okay, so this is weird for me. I'm used to doing programs where I can actually see my audience, so this is going to be different. Um, so I'm just going to start out showing you... Oh, can I speak louder? I think you're going to have to turn your sound up because I can't change the recording sound, I don't think. Maybe I can. Nope, it's way up there. Um, so I'm going to start out showing you where I sit and what I've got here. If I can do this. So, say hello, Hein. Hi, folks. <laughs> My husband, Hein. I'll hold the camera for you. So you can see what I see. <laughs> but you got to look so you can see what they see. So... Um, it's stuck. This computer... I think they can see it. There we go, down lower. There we go. This computer is the old clunker bomb that um, used to run really well, and now that I changed the new setup, it doesn't run very good. So right now, I don't have... I'm not broadcasting with that one. Um, this one over here is the laptop that used to be a pain in the butt, but is working really good now. Um, so that's broadcasting one of the cameras. And I can only run Ustream Producer on one of the cameras, or one of the one computer at a time. I can't run two instances of Ustream and broadcast two cameras. So I can only, I have to have a separate computer for each stream that I'm broadcasting. This is my computer. So this ought to look funky looking at that, because it's got that screen up right now. So this is, and it's a Mac, and I can broadcast using a Mac, um, but I can't pull it in to Ustream Producer directly. I have to do a screen capture. So the problem if I use this one is you hear all my computer sounds for everything that I'm working on on this one. And then this is the master owl computer over here. This is my recording equipment uh, for when I go outside recording owls. That's a little Sony M10 digital recorder, and it's a studio recorder, so it's really nice. And then I've got my fancy schmancy headphones that are really nice. These are like $100 headphones, but they are actually worth it. Really, really nice. Um, and that's what I use plugged into here so I can monitor what I'm recording. So when I run out in the middle of the night to record owls, that's what I grab when I run outside. So this computer, um, we've got mirrored onto our TV. So I think I'll have time to show you on the TV. You can get a little bit closer so they can see a little better. There you go. So we don't have television. We have owl vision. So that's pretty much what you can see. Hopefully you can still hear me when I sit over here to show you. So this shows all five cams. So I can click on them to zoom in on them. Uh, there's Iris sitting on her favorite perch in the flight cage. The nest cam. Rusty the preacher boy sitting in his box. And the far end of the flight cage. Um, and I can move these around, but it's nice that we can watch them on the big screen. Um, so we can sit on the couch and watch the owls in the evening. And I think all of you have seen this before. It's a diagram of the cages. Ooh, I'm not sure if I'm too close here or if you can see it. But basically, as the cages are laid out, we've got the breeding cage, which is attached to the release yeah, training cage. I don't oh, know no, if you no, can no, see you're, you're it's, it's a slow as a... Okay, so... As you lay in it. Yeah. So this is the breeding cage, which is attached to the release training cage. So this one is 12 by 60. This one is 10 
by or 12 by 36 and this is 10 by 60 and it's purposely narrow and skinny to force them to fly to build up their flight muscles and this one's wider so that they can fly back and forth and just have more of an area um, so that'll give you an idea of kind of the layout when we go out there okay Next, we're going to go up and see Alice. I think I can grab this from here. I'll take you up to see Alice. Oh, before we go up, any questions about that stuff, since I wasn't looking at the chat box before? No questions? The name of the owl by my computer, which... Oh, the little one in front of the TV? Maxie? <laughs> he doesn't have a name. But he's a cute little guy, isn't he? There. No questions yet. Okay. Mr. Hoot. Okay, so that's the living room slash office. Now we're going to go upstairs where Alice normally is. So we're going up the stairs. And I believe Alice is sleeping in her room in her nest basket right now. Yeah, she just hooted. So this is the window she likes to sit at in the mornings because it faces east and she gets morning sunshine. So we have a, a perch here that's covered with astroturf because owls need to have rough surfaces for their feet. If they're on smooth wood all the time, they'll get infections and sores on their feet that can actually be lethal and kill them. So this perch is covered with astroturf. And the hall railing here is also completely covered with astroturf. And she gets bored and sometimes thinks it would be fun to shred the astroturf. So, see the egg cartons there? We put egg cartons on here, and you can see she shredded some of these. She loves to shred these for something to do. And then she'll pounce from this side over to this side here, where there's another stack of egg cartons. And she just goes back and forth, and she shreds them. So it's good exercise for her. It's good for her beaks and her talons to give them some work. Um, so anyway, it's good for her. OK. We're back at the top of the steps. This is another one of Alice's perches. So we have a door that looks outside, although you can't see much right now. And again, we've got AstroTurf on the where she's perching. This is Alice's room. And oh, she's in her hide box. Yes, hello, Alice. And she's hooting now because I'm talking, and she doesn't like it when I talk to other people. Basically, she gets jealous. So she's been in her hide box a lot lately. Yesterday, she slept in her nest basket. And just like Rusty and Iris, she likes to dig in there and make kind of a bowl. Turn the lights on. You see? So when she lays her eggs, it's in that compression. So, Alice. And then at a lower angle, as you come in her room, she has. Let's see if I can do this. There's her water bowl. And she drinks out of that. It's just a dog dish, but she drinks out of it. And in the middle of the room is a stump because she's got a permanent wing injury, so she can't get she can't get up very high. She can go down quite easily, but not up. So she jumps up to the stump, and from the stump, she can jump to this perch over here, right by her hide box, or she can jump to this other high perch which is a window that faces north. So she can watch out to the woods. And Alice just got up. She's wondering what's going on. So as you know, hooting posture is 
weird looking. They lean forward, puff their throat out, and cock their tail up when they're doing territorial hoots. So she doesn't understand why I'm talking in here. I'm supposed to be hooting with her. You gonna go down to your perch, Alice? So also in her room, this is her eating mat. So there's a, a plastic tray there, and that's what I bring her food up on. And she doesn't like to eat on the slippery linoleum. So we have an AstroTurf mat. So she'll take her gopher off the plastic, and then she'll put it on the mat, and she'll eat it there so she has a better grip. Um, then she also has her bath pan over here, which is two feet by three feet. So it's really big. And I've got AstroTurf on the edges again, so it's comfortable for her feet. And usually we have about six, six or eight inches of water in there. It's about the right depth for her. And then she has a low perch over here. Again, with, with this one doesn't have AstroTurf. This one just has a, a bark-covered branch here. And she can look to the she can look to the west side of the house, looking out this window. So she's kind of looking almost right into some spruce trees outside the window. There's Alice again. Can you stop hooting now? Oh, she's looking at something outside. What do you see? Can you hoot back? So if you look at her, you see her, see if I can do this, her left wing permanently droops. That's the one that she broke when she fell out of her nest when she was a baby. So her nest was in an old squirrel's nest at the top of a, at the top of a pine tree in Antigo, Wisconsin. And um, it was right in town on Hogan Street. And owls don't build nests. Her parents decided to use a pine tree in town. And they do nest in town. That's not unusual in cities. As long as they've got a place to nest, they eat anything. So they can pretty much nest anywhere as long as there's a nest structure for them. Now, squirrels' nests are not preferred nest sites for them because they're not that sturdy. It's, you know, leaves, few little sticks. Um, but they nest in the winter, so the eggs were probably laid the beginning of February, and she hatched out the beginning of March. Um, oh, I see a question. How old is Alice? She's going to be turning 15 at the Owl Festival. She was hatched in 1997. So she fell out of her nest when she was about three weeks old. The people who lived in the house um, saw her out there, so they called a raptor rehabilitator, and they realized, A, she was too young to be out of the nest, and B, her wing was drooping, so she had an injury. So um, she went to Marge Gibson at the Raptor Education Group in Antigo, Wisconsin, and uh, they determined she wasn't going to be releasable because she had injured the elbow joint. It was severely dislocated. The end of her humerus was broken. And if you have any kind of a severe injury at a joint, whether it be shoulder, elbow, or wrist in a bird, they're generally not releasable. Um, those joint injuries, they just, they just can't fix. So for a bird that can't live in a wild, like Alice, they don't have a lot of options. Either they're euthanized, they have to find a job or get euthanized, basically. So for a common species, like a great horned owl, um, most of them are going to get euthanized because they can only be used as education birds, as foster parents, uh, breeding birds, or in research. So pretty much that everybody that wants one already has one. So typically they're, they're euthanized. So Marge realized she would be a very good education bird because she was comfortable with people from day one. So she was socialized around humans. And then I got her when she was a year and a half to come work at the nature center. So I don't technically own her. I have a special license to have her. Um, typically, state and federal permits are what you need. Although when I first got her, it's really, it was really bad because I only needed a federal permit. And they said, we can't give you a state permit because 
Great horned owls are not protected under Minnesota state law, which is bizarre.